Hello everybody, thank you so much for watching. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Daryl Loth and I'm happy to have you here. So, recently I did a poll on my community tab and I was asking basically what kind of deck you guys wanted to see me play next and Alter Rhetorin was the deck that won that poll. Um, this deck is something that I've been trying to make work for quite a while. I'm still not certain that I've got it mastered, um, but I've gone through various iterations of this deck before and uh, I think that I've found something that's pretty solid and consistent, so I'd like to just go through the list really quick, tell you guys what's going on, and uh, if you want to skip this part, that's totally okay, a lot of people do, but some people like to know exactly what's going on in the deck. So first and foremost, we have Rapid Shot. So this is just a very simple card that's going to be able to draw stuff in the future. Deal one damage to a creature. If it survives, draw a card. Rapid Shot's a very standard card to run in red decks, and it's just really good. Uh, we, of course, want to get to our Altar of Despair, which I probably should explain. Um, so Altar is a six-cost support. It's an activate support, and the activate effect is that you sacrifice a creature to summon a creature from your deck that costs one, then increase the cost of creatures this summons by one. Altar is really cool. It can help you dig through your deck in a really fun way. Um, you know, increasing the cost of every creature that you get is, is just a super cool effect. And uh, I've got one Altar deck on the channel already. It's an Altar Dagoth video. Um, I've thought about doing a part two to that video, though, because I feel like... I didn't do that deck justice in that video. Um, I do really, really like my Alter Dagoth deck, so maybe we'll revisit that at some point in the future. But yeah, that's the point of Rapid Shot, is to get to our, our card like Alter of Despair. Shadow Mirror. Shadow Mirror is our one drop. Alter of Despair, of course, is only going to have one one drop to work on, which is just something we're going to have to deal with. Um, we don't have the luxury of putting Ungolim in this list like green decks do, so Shadow Mirror is kind of our option here. But the cool thing with Shadow Mirror is that with the last gasp of shuffling back into your deck and increasing the cost, we can actually resummon Shadow Mirror uh, potentially three times after the first summon. So we uh, summon him, sacrifice him, then he becomes a four cost, then a seven cost, then an eleven cost, or she, depending on what game you're in. Shadow Mirror, I think, is a male in Oblivion, but a female in. Skyrim? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, so Shadow Mirror, that's, uh, that's the card. Um, okay, so we have a bunch of twos coming up. The reason for this is that we need uh, fodder for our altar to be able to work on later on in the game, but we also uh, can get some pretty good value out of a lot of these cards. So Aldvalathi Assassin, 1-2 two for 2 with Rally and Lethal. That's just an extremely solid card. You can put it down and it basically... Uh, secures a lane for you in the early game if your opponent isn't willing to play against it. Because despite only having one damage, it can kill anything with a lethal, so long as it doesn't get cursed down. Barrow Stalker, a 2-3 two, for 2 with Drain and Guard. The Barrow Stalker is really cool because uh, she works as early life gain, and she also works as late game defense. Um, she can do both at once. I mean, she can defend you in the early game or gain you life in the late game, but those are just the opposite ends of the spectrum I wanted to explain because a guard really uh, is effective at any point in the game. So long as your opponent's not running breakthrough cards, Barrow Stalker will be able to halt aggression, which is super cool. Fifth Legion Trainer. This is a 1-3 for 2. Uh, when you summon another creature, give it plus 1, plus 0. So one thing with Rhetorin that I'm sure a lot of you guys know is that it's um, mostly famous for the rally effect uh, that got introduced with the uh, Houses of Morrowind thing. So Rally is uh, something that gives your creatures plus one, plus one after you attack something. And this is going to be kind of a prominent feature of our deck that we're going to be trying to increase the cost of our creatures. So, fifth, or not cost, sorry. We're going to be trying to increase the attack of our creatures. So, Fifth Legion Trainer is the earliest example of that, and she's going to be really solid throughout the deck, I'd imagine. Rhetorin Forerunner is a 1-1 one, one for two with Charge, Drain, and Ward. These effects are super powerful, and if we're able to combo her with cards like the 5th Legion Trainer with the plus one to attack, uh, she can skyrocket out of control. Really, really cool card. So moving on to our threes, uh, this is an action, of course, Crusader's Assault. Give a creature plus two, plus zero, breakthrough, and slay and pilfer. Draw a card this turn. So Crusader's Assault can really help you do a little bit of extra damage and help you draw through your deck again, which is what we're trying to do to get to our altar. Dark Guardian is our first 3-drop creature. Uh, it's a 2-5 for 3, which is a great stat line, and it's got Guard. When your opponent draws a Prophecy from a Rune being destroyed, draw a card. Dark Guardian will allow us to be aggressive, to hit our opponent, and to break runes without caring too much 
about our opponent's prophecy total. Galen the Shelterer is our first um, unique three drop creature. So Galen is a three, three for three with the summon of choose a creature or item in your hand, shuffle three copies of it with plus three plus three into your deck. Galen is awesome. I think I'm just gonna skip talking about him anymore. I mean, that effect is just insane. We have two items um, that we could work with him on that I'll explain in just a little bit, but it's probably going to be creatures that we're going to want to give that buff to. Enderil Mastermind, 2-1 for 3, summon, draw a card. Enderil Mastermind used to be um, really, really good. Used to have a, a way different effect, kind of like Merchant's Camel, where you got to choose between two cards to draw. But he got a little bit of a nerf. He's still good, though. Um, the draw a card is just a fantastic... Um, summon effect for any any card to have basically because it allows you to stay in the game and keep your momentum necromancer's amulet so this is a support we only run two of them because i have nine supports in total but uh, we run two necromancer's amulet so when a friendly creature dies you gain one health um, the thing with this is that we're going to be sacrificing our own creatures with altar of despair so it made perfect sense to me to add in a little bit of a benefit for us every time that we sacrifice a creature. Just keeps our health total up and keeps us in the game a little bit longer while we're also trying to do our altar stuff, should we find our altar. Next is Tree Minder. Tree Minder is a 1-1 one, one for 3. It's got guard and it's got the summon effect of gain plus 1 max magicka. Tree Minder itself is not very powerful, although it serves the same function as Barrow Stalker in just being a guard. But the summon effect is really why you run this, similar to why we run Enderil Mastermind. Um, gain plus one max magicka is great. We have several creatures over six and seven. So, you know, if we draw them naturally with Altar, we're going to want to be able to access them sooner rather than later. And Tree Minder is our only uh, way to gain magicka in the deck. So we want to make sure that we're getting these guys down as early as possible if we can. Okay, next is the Ash Berserker. Ash Berserker is really fun. So Ash Berserker is a 3-3 three, three for 4, and it has the effect of at the end of your turn, if you have a creature with 5 power or more, draw a card. So this works obviously really well with cards like 5th Legion Trainer. Uh, cards like Crusader's Assault can actually even work on this, and uh, cards like Galen the Shelter. So if we Galen in a bunch of Ash Berserkers, they'll become 6-6s, six, and they'll actually start procking themselves. Um, we have several cards along the line that we'll also bring up as well. Black Soul Gem, for instance. When a friendly creature dies, give a random creature in your hand a plus one, plus one. Um, this is our other support. One of our other supports, I should say. We also run two of them. And again, we're just going to be getting benefits from destroying our own creatures with Altar or for getting our creatures to die in general. So uh, really can't have a downside to that. Ash Berserker is one of our only fours as well. We only have two cards in the four slot that are creatures, but we have a lot of other utility cards as well. Um, or three creatures, my bad. Um, Dawnbreaker is our item. It's one of our items in the deck. It gives you plus four, plus four with a slay effect of banishing the slain creature if it's undead. That slay effect doesn't really matter all that much. It's really the utility of a plus four, plus four for four, um, which is a better stat line than some four drop creatures have so being able to just straight up equip this onto something and uh, get a bunch of value from it is is great uh, next we have Don Fang Don Fang is another item with a forge slot and it's a sword so uh, seems like the developers kind of had a thing going on um, but Don Fang's interesting so it has plus zero plus three uh, and then at the end of your turn if Don Fang is in your hand you change it into Dusk Fang but while it is Don Fang if you get a slay with it you gain five health while it's Dusk Fang it gives you a plus three plus zero so the stat line is flipped and it has pilfer draw a card so this fit pretty well in kind of the game plan that we're going for and i wanted to throw items in because usually i forget uh edict of azura this is a four drop action destroy an enemy creature or support it's just a really great utility card false incarnate your opponent can't gain health uh, i wouldn't be surprised if a whole lot of people don't run this card but i think that it's really really cool um, some people play decks that are just so focused on health gain um, that it's hard to get ahead of them. Um, not, usually those decks aren't super effective, but sometimes it can happen. So if you're running against one of those decks, False Incarnate is just going to flat out neuter them. And if you're just running against a standard deck, it's always a good idea to have Drain. So uh, False Incarnate is going to 
block your opponent in some way from gaining health, if, especially if they're at low health, this is a really good card. And False Incarnate, too, can actually block stuff like the Necromancer's Amulet from gaining health. It's any source of health gain, which is pretty awesome. Um, Inspiring Kinsman. So, Inspiring Kinsman is a 3-4 for 4 with Rally 2, which means that it's going to rally twice uh, when it hits. And last gasp, give a random creature in your hand plus 2, plus 2. So unless this thing gets silenced, it's going to be giving us a pretty good effect and a pretty good boost on our creatures in our hand. And uh, I just thought that it totally made sense in here, especially with the last gasp. It works really well with our altar chain. Divine Fervor, uh, another support that we have in the deck. It's only got two as well. Friendly creatures have plus one, plus one. So we're going to be boosting our creatures up a little bit, which will obviously make our you know, cards like Barrow Stalker, Fifth Legion Trainer, Tree Minder, Indoro Mastermind, it will make them all a little bit more potent when they come back on the board. Faded Wraith. Um, Faded Wraith is a 1-3 for 5, and it, the summon effect is that you draw cards equal to Faded Wraith's power. So again, Faded Wraith works really well with cards like Divine Fervor, Black Soul Gem, and Fifth Legion Trainer. Um, not really much more to be said with that. And Galen. If you can Galen and Faded Wraiths, you're going to be getting a lot of value. Piercing Javelin, so we run these in almost every willpower deck. They just have the prophecy effect of destroying a creature. They are the only prophecy in our deck, so we shouldn't be relying too heavily on them. Um, but they're really good. And uh, just going to move on to Shadowfend Priest, which is also really good. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5. It's our first or second 5-drop creature. Uh, we do only run two 5-drop creatures. Generally, as altar decks go up, it makes more sense to limit the cards that you have in the higher drops because your altar is probably not going to survive that long anyway. So, Shadowfen Priest, 4-4 uh, four, four for 5, with the summon effect of silence another creature or destroy an enemy support. Alongside Edict of Azura with the Shadowfen Priests, we have uh, 6 cards, because we run 3-3, three and three, that can destroy enemy support. So we're going to want to decide, make that decision every time that we play one of these, if we want to uh, do the support destroy or if we want to do the alternate effect. Okay, Altar we already talked about. Apex Wolf, I run two of these. Uh, I just couldn't bring it in myself to run a third one, but uh, Apex Wolf is a card that I just kind of had to include in here. Um, the Last Gasp really is really cool. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four for 6, and it's got Breakthrough and Drain, and then the Last Gasp effect is that you draw the top creature of your deck and you give it Breakthrough and Drain. So... This can work for almost any creature in our deck, especially you'll see later on, we've got cards that are going to make this really, really good. Uh, Odinera Necromancer, 3-3 three, three for 6, so the stat line's a little wobbly compared to the cost, but it has the summon effect of summoning a creature from your discard pile with less power than Odinera Necromancer. You can see with this card how it might skyrocket. Uh, with cards like Black Soul Gem and Fifth Legion Trainer boosting it up, it will actually be able to summon cards from the discard pile quite easily, as cards from the discard pile, they lose all the power that they've gained from hand buffs and stuff like that. So if we had like a, I don't know, um, a 5-8 Faded Wraith, uh, when it goes back into the discard pile, it will be a 1-3. And then if we bring it back with Odinir and Necromancer and we have Divine Fervor on the board, our Faded Wraith will become a 2-4 and then it will draw us two cards if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, Odinir and Necromancer, pretty cool card. Very obvious inclusion in the list. Uh, Praetorian Commander. So Praetorian Commander is a 3-3 for 6. It has the summon effect of give creatures in your deck plus 1, plus 1. So this, along with Apex Wolf's ability, is going to be fantastic. If we can get a bunch of these off, uh, we can boost all the cards in our deck to a ridiculously high stat line, like Enderil Mastermind could become a 5-4. And then if our Apex Wolf gives it Breakthrough and Drain, it's just kind of GG. Um, we can also, you might have noticed, do a very cool combo between Odinera Necromancer and Praetorian Commander. Odinera Necromancer only needs one buff to be able to bring a Praetorian Commander back from the discard pile. So there's kind of this fun loop that you can do with these cards. Now, normally I'm not a big fan of discard pile stuff. I've gone on record and uh, uh, saying that in the past. But I think in this particular instance, it's part of our game plan. We're doing a weird altar deck. I think that it's kind of uh, more acceptable here. And we're not bringing back stuff with Midnight Burial or anything crazy like that. We just have a few specific interactions we can do. So Clockwork Apostle is a 3-3 three, three for 7. Uh, it's our only 7-drop creature, and it has the summon effect of give another friendly creature plus 4 plus 4, and it becomes neutral. 
not too deep of a card here. It's just going to be buffing something extremely well. Uh, it basically gives a creature Dawnbreaker with the stat line, which is super cool. So um, we only run one of them again because our high end is kind of very high in this deck. But um, yeah, Clockwork Apostle, very cool card. Okay, number... Not number. Uh, <laughs> Journey to Sovngarde is a seven cost action. Uh, shuffle all creatures from your discard pile into your deck and give them plus five, plus five. Journey's really cool, especially if we've killed a lot of creatures. It can really help us sustain the game, and it gives us, uh, effectively, if all of our creatures died and got brought back, it would give us 102 uh, creatures in our deck in total. So, very, very interesting card to include here, especially since it's going to be buffing so many creatures that either need a buff or could benefit from, from the 5-5 five, five buff. Uh, our only 8 is our Dark Seducer with Drain and Guard. 7-7 uh, seven, seven for 8. Dark Seducer drains on both turns. Dark Seducer is very powerful. It usually gets removed almost instantly, as will uh, the next card that we're going to talk about with Night Talon Lord. Night Talon Lord is an 8-8 eight, eight for 9 with Drain and Slay. Summon the Slain Creature. Night Talon Lord, also extremely powerful. Gets removed almost instantly anytime you put it down, though, so you have to be a little bit careful with the placement of this card. Minamarco. Uh, Minamarco is a 6-6 six, six for 10, and he summons a creature from your opponent's discard pile when he's played. Uh, this effect is super cool. We had a lot of fun with it in my uh, Necromancer video that I put out recently, and uh, I just thought that he was a pretty obvious 10 for this list. Um, I could have thrown in something like Manticora, but I wanted to make this a little bit more unique of a creature, literally. Um, Mirak is our 11 cost. He's a 5-5 five, five for 11 with the summon effect of stealing another enemy creature. Mirak has always been powerful. He's been in the game since launch, and I, you know, considering that this game doesn't get updates anymore, I think that he will remain extremely powerful. He can either be used as removal to get rid of a guard in the way um, that's preventing you from attacking your opponent, or he can be used to steal your opponent's most powerful creature to attack them with. So, very awesome card. And uh, Iron Atronach is our 12 cost. I didn't want to throw in Parthenax. I didn't want to throw in Odavang. I don't like playing with dragons. I think that they need some kind of a nerf, um, which will never happen. But Iron Atronach felt really, really cool in this deck, especially if we get a lot of buffs on it, because it can almost not be interacted with. Um, it's a 12-12 for 12 with Breakthrough, Regenerate, and Guard. And your opponent can't target Iron Atronach with action. So that means he has to hit it, or she, has to hit it head-on with um, either summon effects or uh, with creatures. So, you know, just if we get this thing up to like a 2020 with, you know, all of our buffs in the deck, uh, it's going to take a lot for our opponent to deal with this thing. <laughs> and uh, with that said, that's the deck. So I hope to see you guys on the other side. And uh, thanks for sticking around. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving if you live in the United States. I uh, obviously wasn't really making videos at that point because I was on my own kind of holiday vacation. But now we're back and uh, thankful that you're here. Okay, we're up against Parish Terrain. Pretty cool name. Um, this person is on Warrior. They are the Conqueror of Madness. And they are at rank 9 like me with a 50 card deck. Uh, I'm going to throw back the Shadowfen and the uh, Divine Fervor there. And I think this is a pretty solid opening hand, actually. We get the early buff down, we get the early Magicka increase, and we get the early Necromancer's Amulet. So, And we actually curved out, so two, three, four. Which means that we actually have a plan, which is good. That's uh, it's more than... Oh, well, that's not great to see this early, but <laughs> we do have more solid cards coming up. So, um, yeah, we'll just continue on. Parish Terrain has not played a single thing yet, which is uh, interesting. So we get our Tree Minder down, boost the Magicka up, 1-3 um, and a 2-1, not super intimidating, especially to someone playing Warrior item. Uh, okay. Alright, it's going to be one of these kind of days. Well, we'll establish the Necromancer's Amulet, and then Black Soul Gem next turn, so we'll at least get our our buffs down and everything. Okay, Sower of Revenge. Um, just get my Black Soul Gem down. I think that's fine. I'd like if the buffs landed on the Redoran Forerunner, obviously. Q. 
Okay, <laughs> we buffed up our Iron Atronach. Um, well, let's see. Shadowfen Priest needs to help out. Um, man, what to do? Shadowfen Priest needs to get rid of Workshop, but this is also a threat, so I'd like to throw False Incarnate down. Uh, shit, man. I think I'm going to go Shadowfen here. Then we'll lay this down, buff it up. I think I'm just going to kill the Sower and try to get ahead on card advantage. Another one. The problem with Workshop is that it's not a unique card, so when you remove it, it's like you still got to deal with the two other copies in the deck. Another Sower. Okay. Well, this is unfortunate. Mighty unfortunate indeed. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I like that. We're getting closer to our our total as well. So let's do Tree Minder over here. Uh, we'll see what card we draw. Another one. Rapid shot. And we'll just pierce some jab on that. Gain a little bit of our health back. But since we've boosted our Magicka twice, we're close to Mirak. And we're close to Iron Atronach. Another workshop. And yeah, <laughs> this is how you play Legends in 2023. Meta Marco, though. That's interesting. Um, we could get a Sower from him. I think that's. Uh, that's not a great plan, is it? Not a great plan. Let's Rapid Shot. Because now that we have Mana Marco, um, I could see. Some pretty interesting things in the future. Do that to try to get the buff on the Faded Wraith. I think every buff has landed on Iron Atronach. I'm just going to play a flat Faded Wraith to draw one card because we have the Magicka for it. And there's our altar, so a little bit late to the party, but he's now got two Call Dragons in his hand. Um, Naha Gleave. We are going to summon Shadow Mirror, though, so that's important to note with our altar. Um, oh, Odinir and Necromancer too. What do we want to summon with that? Shadow and Priest, right? But we need to get buffs. We need to get buffs on our stuff. Um, hmm. So this isn't really going to work, is it? Because what I want to do is get Necromancer out, pull out a 5th Legion Trainer. We need one more Magicka for this. So I could bring out the Rhetoran Forerunner. That's an option. I think that's fine. Necromancer, Veteran Forerunner. Boom. Boom. None of these cards need buffs. <laughs> They're all pretty solid the way they are. Um, we are staying alive, though. We, we've gotten back up to 28 health. I really just need him to play one of those called dragons, but he's not doing that. Okay. Yup. There's another Necromancer. Go with my altar. Okay, we buffed onto the Necromancer too. So what that means is we could get out like a, a priest soon. Get rid of that. Um, we'll kill that, and then we'll wait. Buff goes on to Mirak, because of course it does. Let's see what he's going to do here. 
even more word wall. Word wall. Excellent. Uh, so tired. It's just such a boring way to play. Another one. Uh-huh. A fine battle. Yeah, fine battle. Well, um we can take this with Mirak, that would cut him down by quite a bit. Uh and then we'd have enough for a barrow stalker to just block up. Um, we'll do that. Play the Barrow Stalker. And, uh... Yeah, I think that's fine. That'll, that'll do for now. I could have laid down the Iron Atronach, but I don't know what good that would have done, because 9 plus 6... Uh, he could have easily killed it somehow with another crossbow or something. Yeah, or Squish. There's our Necromancer getting buffed up another again. One. Iron Atronach getting buffed up again. Squish, okay. Another one. <laughs> Do we really need a 1919 Iron Atronach? Maybe. I don't know. We're close to being able to pull Mirak back, though. We are very close to that. Um, I think I'll pull his Naha Gleave back. It seems about right. So, Mana Marco pulls back. Uh, Ageless Vampire could be good too, but we need to block up the damage. So we'll block up with Naha Gleave, lay down the Inspiring Kinsman, and then sacrifice it with Altar, gain a little bit of health. Another a lethal creature now, and a 7 7 Odinir and Necromancer, which can bring back Mirak now to steal something. He's going to call Dragon again. Pulls out another Parthenax. We can steal it back. Oh, that's good for him to lose. Hopefully he doesn't have another one. Okay. We're going to buff again. 21-21 Iron Atronach. Another one. Twenty-two, twenty-two. <laughs> Another twenty-three, twenty-three. He's got his own Ash Berserker. Very nice. Okay. Well, do we just play it at this point? I think we just play it. Unless, like, how much? Three, 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 three. That's uh, twelve, thirteen. I mean, ugh, I don't know. Necromancer could bring back Mirak, steal the Parthenax. Necromancer could bring back Nahagleave again, I think. No, not Nahagleave. Could bring back Mana Marco. Bring back a Sower. Not really something we need. The reason I'm debating this is because it could. it's so easy for him to get rid of it, honestly, now that I think about it. But we'll play it. We'll see what he does. Yeah, see, and then it loses all the buffs. Like, I, I genuinely, Parthenax has been broken since the game released. <laughs> like, Call Dragons only made it worse. I'm not gonna... Yeah, there's no chance for us to win anymore. I'm just gonna leave. If he's just gonna fuck around. Alright, we're up against Horoseva, the Great Main. Uh, they are on Guildsworn with <laughs> that card back. So that tells me that we're gonna be going up against Invade. Um, we got some decent cards in our opening hand here. I'll keep it. Uh, 
And an early altar, too. I think all Velothi is the better play in the beginning here. Yep, there's Invade. So, uh, this is going to be very similar to the, the last <laughs> match that we just played, where I'm just going to be fighting for my life for the whole fight. Try to kill this before he gets a Sigil Keeper down, at least. Also, Karna should be pretty good against this. And the buff on the Rhetoran Forerunner is really good, too. I don't get why people run that. Okay. It just seems like so extra. Just focus on invading, you know? Um... Well, let's see who gets the the buff, I guess. Fifth Legion Trainer. Okay. I'll throw it down. Buff up our Shadow Mirror. Hit like that. And I'll hit him again. Alrighty. And there's the Sigil Keep. <laughs> with guard. Awesome. Thankfully, um, we have altar coming up next turn, and we're able to kill that while retaining some presence on the board. Now, Shadow Mirror is not going to get pulled anymore because we already played it, so maybe not the best move. He got guard on that as well. Elixir of Potency is gone, thankfully. Now that we have an Edict, though, I'm not uh, super concerned about any of this stuff. So I think just getting the Altar down is, is very important here. And uh, I am actually going to sacrifice this because it's going to summon a Sweet Roll. <laughs> and we can at least give the Sweet Roll plus one, plus one, right? And then I'll wait. Okay. Echo of Akatosh. Sacrifice that. Get another Old Velothi. Very cool, very cool. Play the Dark Seducer down. He might have so many cards in his hand that are just invade that he doesn't have any removal. That's what I have to bank on, at least. So far, we're doing okay, though. Okay, so if I do this, and then I edict this, uh, I can just kill this, <laughs> and then we'll get that down, and I'll even alter it. There we go. So I got rid of the, the edict early, obviously, but that's okay. Should be okay. Well, turns out we weren't really fighting for our life much during this one. Kind of had it in the bag. Uh, I don't want to hit face, so I'll go like that. I don't want to buff onto the Praetorian Commander. And I'll actually sacrifice the Praetorian Commander, because it's doing the least here in the position. And now we get a pretty solid board state against him, so... We'll see. We'll see what he does. Brelock Commander. Guildsworn Recruit. Or er, Apprentice. Okay, well, this is going pretty well. <laughs> um, Ash Berserker. Goes down soon. Probably now. Um, I'll hit him too. Why not? And uh, I could prolong our altar chain. What's coming up next? Five? Fives are Fated Wraith and Shadowfen Priest. What does this do? Summon and Pilfer. 
Yeah, I think I need to address that, don't I? Let's see what we get. Shadow Fen Priest, perfect. Um, Necromancer's Amulet, cool. So we are actually digging our way up through our altar chain. Now he does have a lot of cards, which is a problem. And he's getting rid of our altar. So now we're just gonna have to play on our own for a little bit. Sigil Keeper. We still have a lethal creature on board, so that's not really a problem. TBH. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to hold on to that Edict. Kill that. Should have laid down the, the Necromancer's Amulet. That's my bad. Um, but we'll do that. Kill that. Attack. And Knight Talonlord. Pull another Shadowfen Priest. So far, so good. They will fall so you have, uh... Oh. He just didn't want me to be able to summon anything, I think. <laughs> well, that's a free guard. Apex Wolf, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll do this. It's fine with me. And that's fine with me. And I'll lay down the Apex Wolf. I'll hit him. Draw a card. Things are going pretty well, I would say. A lot better than last match. There's the invasion party. That's why I wanted to hold on to the Edict, actually. see what keywords he rolls. Drain would be helpful for him here, but it's not going to work out. There's a piercing javelin as well. Barrow stalker gains breakthrough. Uh, I guess we could just start hitting him now, right? Do another ash berserker. False incarnate. Draw two cards. I think we'll just jab on that, yeah. Keep the Edict because it's cheaper, and yeah, again, we're looking good. I greet Oblivion with open arms. You fear no pain, Okay, uh, GG. Let's see if we can get a normal match going on in the next one. Okay, we're up against Bagnarok the Lich. They're on Telvani, and they are on 100 cards. Uh, this opening hand is okay. I'm going to get rid of the Ash Berserker, actually. Dark Guardian's probably... Yeah, it's probably better. Okay. So we just faced um, Yagram's Workshop Dragons and Invade. Uh, Guildsworn Invade. So let's see if uh, this person's on some some equally degenerate thing. Get the 5th Legion. Get the Tree Minder out. My first guess with those is always Manic Jack, but it could be the, the twins. Skilled Fets. Okay, that's interesting. I, know a I'll clear a path for you. I wanted to get the Tree Minder out, but we need to get rid of that. So this could be like a curse-heavy kind of list. He really wants that back. Um, play down the Tree Minder, I guess. We'll hit him down. Yeah, uh, I mentioned in the deck explanation, I, I hope you guys in the United States had a good Thanksgiving. Oh, that's rough to see. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of traditions uh, 
<coughs> traditions overseas about Thanksgiving in other countries, but Thanksgiving is a uh, it's a time in the United States that uh, it's really stupid. <laughs> Honestly, it's just an excuse to hang out with your family for a day um, and be thankful for stuff. But the the origin of it is pretty dumb. So I'm on cat's paw. Yeah, um, this thing definitely needs to go. Get my black soul gem out here. Buff onto the dark guardian. Not exactly what I wanted to see, but um, he's kind of doing stuff that I don't like at all. <laughs> so I our high health total is going to come back to haunt us. North Point Herald, right? Captain. Uh, okay. Play a Dark Guardian over there. Mastermind over here. Dawnbreaker is good to see. That's the North Point Herald. Okay. Ooh, Lightning Bolt. And Martin. I hate how much, like, removal we're having to use on him already, but a lot of Telvani is kind of, you have to act against it. It can be kind of rough. This Faded Wraith could come in clutch, if though. It, it Sails through storms. Stolen. Man, that sucks. Fifth Legion Trainer... With the Faded Wraith. Would have loved to have buffed onto that, but couldn't really do it. And we'll play the Inspiring Kinsman as well. He is going to summon something, but we have a Dawnbreaker and a Piercing Javelin to deal with whatever it is. That's fine. Totally fine. That thing usually brings out, like, Ancano on me, so... Totally okay to see that. Prankster mage. Out of my way, worm. And it was the twins. That's a really cool card. Clockwork Apostle. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> haven't gotten to use this yet. So we have Dawnbreaker and Clockwork Apostle. We could give a total of eight to something here. Um, he's getting lower on cards, and so am I, obviously. So Prankster Mage, I'm going to hit him and then it's going to go away. I'm going to go like this. It's going to go... Um, I will die for that's going to rally twice. So we get a 7-7 seven, seven Clockwork Apostle. So much work, yes. Bring it over here. Do that. 6-8 um, here. It can die to this combo. But I think we've got a pretty solid board state now. I don't really feel the need to play either of these. Goodbye. Oh, nice. There's the Guardians. Honestly, haven't seen Alien Guardians in a little while, thankfully. Um, and although I have an Edict of Azura, this guy needs to die first. So we'll go here, play a Dawnbreaker that and uh, I don't actually have a creature in my hand anymore so that's that's rough um, honestly I'm gonna piercing javelin this I'm doing that because there's nothing to buff on in my hand right now and it sucks to lose this guy and we have an option for this over here now he could just simply bring his alien guardian back from the discard pile pretty easily in fact um, oh, blood magic lord Okay, please give me a creature. Give me a Faded Wraith, actually. Shadow Pen Priest is okay. Uh, we'll do that. Get a 10 10 Shadow Pen Priest. Like so. But we're, <laughs> we're really not in good shape right now. 
Yep, okay, Corpse Curse is fine. Interesting. Do that and that. Okay, he's limiting himself on his card total. My card total is pretty limited. I wanted to kill the um, the Renegade here because I don't want him drawing a card. That's fine. I would play Raybot if I were him. He's kind of been dead weight in his hand for a while. And so, Bagnarok now. Didn't even want to hit me. Um, well, kill my Apex Wolf to get the buff on this. Play the Rhetoric Forerunner as well. We'll draw a few more cards. Ooh, nice. Okay, this is working out pretty well. Praetorian Commander will go down before the Altar of Despair. Nice. Okay, 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 okay. This is working. This is somehow working. Go like this. Go like this. Another Praetorian. Altar. Get rid of the Faded Wraith. Shadow Mirror is a 4 4. Hit there, and we are. We're chilling. We're good. Now we want to get rid of Shadow Mirror as soon as possible. That way we can shuffle her back into the deck. Okay, and a concession. That's awesome. <laughs> so we didn't really use the altar too much, but that was a good game. Okay, sorry. We're up against Sega Death, uh, 1337. They are the clan chieftain. That is upsetting to see. Probably means... Uh, goblins <laughs> um, on mono agility as well 50 cards could definitely be goblins there's an early altar so we don't have to search for it too much which is good laying down the fifth legion trainer with no plan yeah that's goblins Okay, thankfully he just played a Bloody Hand Chef right into me. So that's good. That's good to see. But uh, we're going to really have to rely on our cards getting buffed up. Or Water Scourge. Because he's going to be cursing us down quite a bit. Um, so Inspiring Kinsman's a 4-4. Pretty obvious choice to go down. We'll contest against this. Swims at night is also a little upsetting. Wow, quite a few curses. I don't think a 5-5 is going to matter all that much, though. Um, you know what? I'd like to get that curse out of his hand, so I'm going to play this. Hopefully he curses it to try to get more, like, greed value on this thing, and then I can just javelin it next. Oh, okay. He didn't fall for it. Uh, well, this is going to be annoying, but, like, what more... Oh, he's probably got all zeros in his deck. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> this has gotten out of control. Uh, if I play a Praetorian, it'll buff everything in my deck, but to what cost? I guess it's good. I guess it could be good. Um, I'll throw it over here. These are going to be pulling out, like, suppresses now, because he's played... Wow. Okay. Is it the first time, right? Yeah. Okay, one curse. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So this dies. This dies. 
<clears throat> this goes over here. We'll see if we can stabilize. I don't think we can. I may have played this. Oh. Sorry, I had to. I'm a little bit sick. Um, I had to mute my mic, but I may have played this a little bit incorrectly, but I don't really know. Okay. There. Um, I really need like a like a something, you know. <laughs> Barrow stalker can go over there. Um, what can I do? Can I do anything? I don't think I can do anything. The only thing I can do is get a. Did I play Shadow Mirror already? Only thing I can do is get a Shadow Mirror with this. Nope. Okay. Um, oh, not greetings. I meant to say good game. Uh, yeah, that was that was a rough one. I don't think I played that exactly correctly. Didn't matter where I put the guard, by the way. It would have died anyway. Or I would have died anyway. All right, we're up against the Orc Guest, Agent of the Throne. Hopefully my throat stops being all upset. Um, Orc Guest, Agent of the Throne on Archer. Curious about what they're playing, honestly. There's the Iron Atronach. That really screwed us over on that one game. That, that was just so dead in my hand. Another early altar, though. We'll see if we can actually get it down and use it this game. It was pretty rough on the last one. Lay down the 5th Legion with hopes to do 2-1 uh, Rudder and Forerunner next. Okay, we're also up against some... Maybe... I don't know. I don't know what we're up against. <laughs> we're up against something, though, that's going to be trying to reduce our cost. Just similar to the last one. Surprise Divine Fervor could be good. Because it would give this thing its normal stat line again. Oh. Ugh. Oh, tiny dragon. I'm killing this because he's playing tiny dragon next. That's my thought anyway. Okay. More dragon stuff to deal with. It's great. Get rid of that. At least we can get the altar down. That'll be nice. He's probably got the... Oh. Not call dragon. It's interesting. Man, really not a great day for me to be recording with my voice all messed up. Uh, I like the Tree Minder, actually, and the Barrow Stalker, just to give myself a big lane full of, um, full of threats. He probably runs Drain Life, though. Or, is that what it's called? Drain Vitality. Archer's Gambit. That's fine. We just want to make sure that this thing goes away soon. Still no real need to put the altar down yet. Just because I know he's got something coming that's going to be upsetting. Okay, that's fine. Well, that could have been better. We can do this now, at least. Just get things going. I think we're in a way better position than we have been recently. World Eater's Ivory. I'm so glad that I have a Shadow Vent Priest. So glad. Uh, we'll do that. 
Ash Berserker in there, and uh, I would like to get my Shadow Mirror out, but not yet. It's not like Ungulum, where it just makes sense to get it out whenever. Sheer Point, what's that going to do? Fell the mighty that. Gotcha. Now we can get our shadow mirror out. Do that. Um Odinir and Necromancer doesn't really have a way to get buffed. He's a four four right now. I guess I'll play the Night Talon Lord. Can't think of a better time to do it. We'll be drawing a card and getting an intimidating presence on the board. His uh his spine or sheer point. We'll uh, have to do some work on this. Okay, that's interesting. I would have probably limited a uh, Night Talon Lord, but it's okay. Um, is now a good time to get my <laughs> Iron Hatcher knocked down? We've got, uh, yeah, I think it is. Why not? Why not? See if I can get any actual value out of that. He could just Territorial Viper it. That's like the best dragon he could have gotten for me. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can play something normal next. Um, we're up against Anyat... Anyata ZZZ888. Or any Taz, I don't know. Something like that. Uh, they're the Ghost Whisperer. They're on Ebonheart. They're on a 100 card Ebonheart deck. So yeah, um, let's see if we can play against something that's not dragons or goblins. Or invade. <laughs> let's see about that. We've gotten 5th Legion Trainer in our opening hand, like, I, I want to say like six times in a row now. It's crazy. Okay, early mute. I'm totally fine for that to get muted, honestly. Um, and Redoran Forerunner. We've had that combo quite a bit. I'll even use Rapid Shot and just cycle some cards. Get the Rhetoric Forerunner down. This way I can open up for using Crusader's Assault on either one of these on the next turn, or laying down an Inspiring Kinsman. Totally fine. We'll take this opportunity to Crusader's Assault. Draw two cards. We're looking okay in the early game here. Restless Templar I'm okay with going down. Um, how about we do 5th Legion in the Shadow Lane with the Enderil Master. Then I could do Necromancer Necromancer. The chance is tough to deal with here. Okay, all in all, that's that's not a great thing for us to be dealing with. Uh, I'm gonna silence this though, and I'm not gonna hit him. Don't really want to see this thing become a seven-three or whatever it would be. Yep. Sower. Okay, we've seen a lot of Sower today. Um, I think I'm alright with this. Bring me down to 26. Now he's at 26, so I'll hit him. 
And uh, I'll play the Barrow Stalker down too. Again, I'd like to get these Necromancer's Amulets down, but it's going to be a little bit tough. I will ah! you to your death. Okay. Then trading those, yeah, that makes sense. Good card. Uh, I'm glad that we're getting some of his silence effects out of his hand, though. Our glory will live on forever. Uh, we have nine magicka next turn, so we could either do... Um, eh, whatever. <laughs> I think we'll play that. I was going to say we could do Necromancer, Necromancer, Treeminder, but it doesn't seem like a good play. Today they missed their shot. Okay. Wow, waves of the fallen on yourself. Not something I typically see. So we've got a lot of options here. Um, I think I like the idea of just getting like. I will die. Yeah, we'll do that. I think I like the idea of getting my supports down. This thing's gonna die. Yep. I gain a little bit of health. 13 13 Night Talon Lord. He's also got a Black Soul Gem, which is interesting. The Child of Hersey. That probably needs to go. Um, I'll get my Night Talon Lord down. Hopefully he doesn't have anything for that. He already used Waves of the Fallen. It's not looking good, though. <laughs> not at all. Oh, okay. He doesn't have enough. Oh, please don't be Corpse Curse. Please don't be Corpse Curse. Okay. Totally fine. Okay, so now... Um, we can summon. We gotta be careful here. Let's see what we get. Kill this. Get some prophecy, I think. Yep, we got a prophecy. It's fine. And now we have enough to remove two creatures, so we'll remove this one and this one. He's got 13 damage on board, but we were able to get back up to 20, so that's awesome. And if he goes straight for my face, I think, well, we have lethal. So he's going to have to clean this up. Unless he doesn't want to, and he just wants to die, that's fine. Or if he's got, like, a charged creature, two charged creatures. I mean, there's ways he could try to win this. Oh, see, that's, that's rude. Um, okay. Faded Wraith could be good. Um, we do have this fun combo because we've used our Tree Minder to boost our magic. We have Clockwork Apostle, Altar of Despair to get Shadow Mirror. But that, that actually doesn't work. Not really. So, we're going to have to get... Oh, man. Do this first, or we buff onto the Inspiring Kinsman. Does the altar actually help us here? I don't think so. I'm going to go for this play. Clockwork. So much work yet to do. That. Ald Velothi. This will block one of his attacks and gain two health provided he doesn't have another silence effect or negation effect of some sort. Gold brand. Root of the head. Come on. Oh, okay, we're still in it. We're still in it somehow. 
as long as this isn't something crazy. We are still in it. Holy shit. Okay. This thing really needs to go. I've no time Thankfully for I have a way to do that. Up here. Nice. Alter. I've no time for this. Oh shit. I fucked it up. <laughs> I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Uh fuck. No, I meant oh god damn it, dude. That's not what I meant to do. Fuck. I meant to alter this. Well, I messed it up. I messed it up. I messed it up. I messed it up. Uh, we'll see if we can stay alive still, but that was a huge, colossal fuck up. Oh, man. Okay. We're technically still in it. This is really bad, though. Yeah, that's that's nuts. Okay. Uh. Yeah, oh, that's not gonna do anything. <laughs> I've no time. We need to kill this. I need Barrow Stalker, False Incarnate. Does Journey work here? I don't think Journey works. Aspiring Kinsman. This is so tough, man. This is so tough. Um, and then this has to go on there because he's got Gold Brand. Okay. Oh, what a what a huge mistake. That's so upsetting. Oh man, that's so upsetting. I don't even know if it would have helped. But that's just so upsetting. Oh god. I'm gonna go back and watch this and and cry. <laughs> okay, we're up against Dagnan 18, the Miraculous. They're on Dagoth. Um, yeah, that last match, man, I feel like I could have won that if I didn't make that mistake, but I, I need to watch that back. Um, do I like any of this? I guess Shadowmere's okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That just felt like such a stupid, <laughs> stupid thing for me to do. Because I had it all planned out, and then I just, I clicked the wrong button. Fifth Legion Trainer again, basically in the opening hand, with a charge creature, so can't go wrong with that. Although I have been losing a lot today. So it turns out you can't go wrong with that. We do have a Dark Guardian, though. Become a 3-5. There's our altar. Um, so if anything, this has been a good experiment on maybe how not to play an altar veteran deck. But uh, hopefully so far it's been at least somewhat enjoyable. Flame Spear Dragon. Could be good. For us. So this will go down as a 2 1, then we'll give it plus 2. So we could kill this at the very least. But I don't think that's good enough. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. Okay, well that'll buff onto the Shadow Mirror at least, so. That's fine. Yep, totally okay. Um, I'll even do a quick rapid shot. Shadow Mirror, Crusader's Assault.
Now we're even on cards with him, so I'll hit him. Because uh, there was a potential to draw a card with the prophecy being drawn. Shadow Mirror no longer on the table for our altar, so it's a good idea to just get that over with quickly. Yeah, all right. Uh, I think I don't want this guy to attack me, so we'll do that. No, I don't want him to, to gain magic on me. I'm kind of okay if he attacks me. Although that's that decision is going to haunt me, I'd imagine. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> that's really bad. Okay. <clears throat> um, double Barrow Stalker is good. Yep, double barrow stalker, triple barrow stalker even. Get here. Fifth I legion. Smell the scent of the living. I smell the scent of the living. I smell so if he has uh what's that card called? Um Unstoppable Rage. If he has Unstoppable Rage, <laughs> I might leave. Because uh, that's there's just no coming back from that. Looks like he doesn't though. But that's also rough. That's tough to see. Three Magicka. Yep, that's not easy to look at. Roll the Wisp. Um, okay, Rhetoric Forerunner is kind of cool here. I think we'll play Necromancer's Amulet. I will kill Wrong place for a midnight stroll. everything. Wrong place for a midnight stroll. Place yeah. for a midnight stroll. I'm worried I'm going to get a guard. What are my threes? I could get a uh, uh, Dark Guardian if I do this. So I'm kind of worried about that. So I think I'll do Inspiring Ruling Kinsman instead. Or, or should I? I don't know. I'll do this. Okay, thank God. That's good. Place Do for that. A the gamble was worth it. It's going to be in my way. What fours do I have? My fours aren't going to help me here. That could be helpful, though. Okay, let's try to do some actual math here. I'm going to lay these down first so I can see it. Seven, eight, nine, plus two. So we got 11 damage. He's got 14 get rid of. So I think we're going to have to... Yeah, we're going to have to do something that we probably don't really want to. <coughs> Crusader's Assault onto this. So we get here. Ash Berserker will kill that. Divine Fervor could be good. Um, kill this. And then... We'll wait. Let us begin the oh, Jesus. Please, no. Okay, I need one of those things I gave into my deck. I need it right now. We can bring back a 2-2 Redoran Forerunner with 
find Ferber next turn, but not right now. It'll just be a 1-1, one, one, <laughs> which sucks. No move. We can yeah, the, uh, we're petering out. Well, shit. Shadowfen Priest is good. Sort of. <laughs> Doesn't do much of anything for us. Alright, that's another one down. That's rough. Yeah, that's really rough. The victory is yours. We're up against Macus Morvanian, the Blade Master. They're on what is that battle mage? The seventy card deck. Kinda like this opening hand, it's different. Um, okay, looks like item battle mage. So far, so not good. <laughs> so far, so not good at all. I think False Incarnate needs to go. It's not really done much this game, in these games. Inspiring Kinsman will have to do. Hopefully that'll buff up the other Inspiring Kinsman or the False Incarnate. Either one, when it dies. Ah, the Munda Stone. The Skill Stone. Apex Wolf's not bad either. All three Inspiring Kinsmen's getting out in the first four turns of the game. He's not going to have Silence Effects likely in his Battle Mage list, although he could have like Flatloo Sharpshooter or something. He rolls a Drain on that, which is extremely annoying. Get a huge Mirac, which is not something I really need. Um, False Incarnate goes down over here, I think, to prevent against the huge drain creature he's about to have. I am the shield of my clan. Okay, there's the silence. I'm unclear on why he wouldn't, like, put the dagger on the battle mage and then kill me, but... I don't know. Um, yeah, so we'll kill that. That. I'll throw a Dark Guardian over there. I'd like to get Apex Wolf down. Craven Conscript with Ward. Um, well, Dawn Fang's now possible on there. I think Apex Wolf is better. Don Fang, Inspiring Kinsman could be a play. I think we'll do that. Gain a little bit of health, a little bit of security. Doesn't want to do anything. May the forebears guide you. 
Me too, man. I need the forebearance guidance. Okay, heavy battle axe with what? What's this card? Okay, we'll do that, I guess. I will die for what's right. Praetorian. Enderville. I don't know. I'm confused why he hasn't played this yet. Fireball. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense now. Do double divine fervor. We now have an 11-11 Mirak, by the way. There's life in this old thing, yes. There's life in this old Oh, he's gonna thing, yes. silence this guy. That's too bad. Just takes away his effects though. The the divine fervor buffs remain. The error was mine. <laughs> Didn't really matter which one he did. Do Necromancer's oh, amulet. Alter of Despair. Just want to get a, a like safety net Don't let him break our lives. before we really try to kill him. Shadow Mirror down. But we are looking really good in terms of board state. You venture into shifting sand. Roaming Duelist. Unfortunately for him, we do just have Piercing Javelin on this. Yeah, we got two Piercing Javelins on it. I'll do that. Ash Berserker on itself, and Dark Guardian, and I think we're good. Anchorite Butcher with Charge. Not really going to do a whole lot in that lane. It is a big burst of damage, though. The error was mine. <laughs> nice play. Um, yeah. Greetings. Oh, I keep doing that. Good game. Um, okay, just kill him. Don't want to waste his time. And we'll move on to the next match. Alright, we're up against Isengard 1991. Uh, they're on Scout. They are the Lich. And uh, I took a break in recording. Uh, it's been a few hours, but I'm back now. Um, just kind of wanted to, I don't know, get a reset on the momentum and everything. And uh, I've been playing a ton of Risk of Rain Returns lately. I don't know if you guys are... Um, are really into that type of video game, but I definitely am. Uh, it's like a roguelike 2D scroller type of game. It's it's really fun. It's a remaster of uh, Risk of Rain 1 from 2013. So, pretty fun game. Been trying to get all the achievements in it. This guy is, looks like he's on a 77 card deck. Um, we're going to get the Indril Mastermind down first, I think. It's gonna swing like that. Yeah, this deck has certainly been up against some tough competition today. Um, I'll just do this and put the Inspiring Kinsman down. I think if this buffs onto... I'd prefer it to buff onto the Necromancer more than anyone else. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's good. That's a big boost. Um, and since we have five Magicka, I'll 
I think we'll lay both of those down. I was thinking about Dark Guardian, but this seems a little bit better to me. It's his second tree minder, so his magic has been boosted twice. Um, Faded Wraith will get a little bit of value, so I'll put it down anyway. Yeah, we would have had to have had that thing in our hand for a while um, before it got any real value, so that's a better way to use it, I think. Okay. Mm, that's a good play here. I really don't want to play much of anything against this. I'll, I'll put down my Dark Guardian, I guess. I will keep the Saisahan. So we're going to have to eat it to that. Either Edict or Shadowfen. I kind of want to keep the Edict for something scarier. Hmm. But then what do I really have? Clockwork Apostle doesn't really do much of anything here. So I think Edict is probably the best thing that I've got, and then maybe a... No. It feels like a waste of a Barrow Stalker, but... I'll put it over here to guard up. I don't know if you guys saw the... Uh... Oh, there's that. So we can pull that back with Mana Marco, actually. And maybe that'll get us back in the game a little bit, but it's it's going to be tough. Uh, inspiring Kinsman could be decent to get back, but I could keep this and wait to bring our Mana Marco back again. So I feel like the best thing to do maybe is just to get enough down on the board to be able to kill this. Um, which I don't have currently. If I put down another Shadowfen Priest, I could. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up to kill one of the Aeliad Guardians and then bring it back with Mana Marco. Just maximizing my chances of being able to do that. Well, that sucks. But we do have Clockwork Apostle to kill that, so that's good. Um, so that, there, play a Barrow Stalker. So yeah, Mana Marco will be able to steal his Aeliad Guardian, and then we can use his Cringe against him. Which is, uh, it's always pretty fun <laughs> to use other people's uh, overpowered shit against them. Uh, yeah, I like that. Just get rid of that. And I think, actually, I'm going to ignore that for the moment. Um, getting an altar down doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel 100% right, but I'm going to do it anyway. Altar shift that. Hit face. Um, I just don't really like getting down my Aeliad Guardians, well, his Aeliad Guardians, immediately. So I'll kind of just put a lot on the board and see how he handles it. Because he's got a lot of cards on me, so. Oh, he's got Mana Marco. So that's, that's good that I put that down okay and he actually used it on my altar that's awesome okay this should be pretty simple then do mana marco pull out one of his alien guardians 
I will hit him. We got our buff onto the Necromancer. It won't be enough to bring Mana Marco back. Um, we'll hit. I'd like to get a little bit of health gain back. So we'll do that, and then we'll wait. This is the one time you'll see me playing with Aliad. The one time you'll see me playing with Aliad Guardians. Almost choked on my own tongue. So what's he going to do here? Okay, I'm glad that I got that little bit of extra healing. I hope that Max Martel doesn't think that I'm playing with Aliad Guardians myself. Skeletal Dragon. I think that's the right play. Hmm, okay. So this is going to be tough. I'm going to have to get the buff on my Aeliad, or my Odinir and Necromancer there. Because um, this is an 8. Shadowfen Priest could be really good, though. Uh, so let's see what we get here. Buff onto the Ash Berserker. Not really what we wanted. And that buffs onto the Necromancer, so we can get our Mana Marco back and steal his other Aeliad Guardian. Um, or we play this now. We bring back a Shadowfen Priest to mute this down. Not really sure what the right play is here. Um, how much do I have? I haven't even counted. 14, 15, 16, 17? I'm running out of time. I think this is fine. Do this. Then we'll bring back a Shadowfen Priest. We'll mute this. And we'll play that. Gain a little bit of health. End our turn like that. And now using Odinir and Necromancer on Mana Marco is out of the question. If he has Swift Strike, I'll be pretty annoyed. He's going to silence that. I wonder what he does here. Okay, he kills it. That's fine. Oh. Do we win? I think he's just hoping for a prophecy at this point. So I have over lethal, which is good. Uh, so honestly, I'm going to kill this first. And then we're going to go for the kill. Swing with those. Swing with our seven. Swing with our six. And swing with our five. Whew, oh my god. That was uh, kind of an intense one. Alright, we're up against Night Ghoul, the Immortal. They are also on Redoran, which is... Hopefully going to be an interesting mirror match. Um, I'm going to keep the Ald Balathi for sure. Throw back the Faded Wraith. Uh, this is a decent opening hand. Um, okay, he's got the Great Moot Squire down. Uh, hello, greetings. What does this do? It gets plus one, plus one. Him having a 2-3 on the board before I have anything is probably okay. I really want to Galen one of these in. Let me get the Ald Malathi down first. Do I Galen in Shadow Mirror or the Forerunner? Forerunner is probably the right option. Although Shadow Mirror would be really fun with our altar stuff, so I'm going to do that. I feel like that'd be super cool, because now we have a Shadow Mirror for every one of our altars. And then some. I'm not here to hurt you, but I will. Hmm. Okay, he got lucky with the Relentless Raider, but that's not really that good. 
And uh, I don't want to ring anything else out. I'm going to retain my one charge. Venom Tongue. Cool. Necromancer's Amulet will go down, and this is fine over here. Okay, so there are four Shadow Mirrors in our deck at this point. <laughs> the chances of drawing a Shadow Mirror are higher than anything else. I think. I'm not a statistician. Or a statistician. I don't know how to say it. I'm not into statistics. So if he's playing Quara Clan Bloodkin and Venom Tongue, Great Mood Squire technically could count. He could be on a high Hrothgar deck. He's definitely on something kind of interesting. Uh, there's one of our Shadow Mirrors. I don't know. This is one of the Galenden ones. Okay. So I'll play that. And hopefully he won't notice that it's been Galen in because it looks exactly the same as the other ones. Um, yeah, thank you. So now nine, no, uh, eleven damage on board. Plays who done it, and the Zivali Warlord. Cool. Um, Dawnbreaker could be interesting, but I don't really need it. Just do that, and he gave me a card, so I will give him a card. And uh, maybe 5th Legion Barrow could be a good play. I don't know. We'll wait. We'll hold off on it. Fell the Mighty. The Restless Templar. Uh, not too upset about seeing the Restless Templar. I think the plan's probably the same for 5th Legion Barrow. Um, although, I don't know if I really want to play into the Restless Templar with the Barrow. kind of like to have the health gain for myself, but then again, it's good to just get this out of the way, kill the Templar, because it does have 5 attack, which is kind of a lot for me to be dealing with. And we're almost even. After I poke him with this, we'll be even. And he's ramped just one time with Whodunit, but that card ramps him up by two. And he's playing something that I basically have to address now. Although I'm fine to address it like this, the Shadow Fen Priest that. Nothing else that I can get down on this turn, so we'll do that. And now we are even in runes and health, but I have a better board than he does. But he has more magicka, so we'll see where the game takes us. Also looks like he's got more cards than I do. Odinarin brings back probably a Rhetoran Forerunner. I would not mind getting a Galen back. I think that would be really good. And honestly, I also think that killing this right now with a Javelin could be the right play. Um, cards that draw are extremely powerful. I technically have one with Odinir and Necromancer. Not really, but I kind of do. Uh, he, on the other hand, has something pretty annoying. So I'm going to take that out and deal my five damage taking it out with the javelin because the edict can uh well it's a lower cost so i can use it next turn for a lower price and uh it can be optioned better he's also running faded wraith i'll do what i can and determined supplier so he's kind of on a magicka gaining thing there's double odin Aaron. we'll just have to sit back and watch what he's up to i guess so I'm really not comfortable with playing either Necromancers right now, while there's not a big reason to do so. Um, does this... 
I could do a science experiment real quick using Dawnbreaker on this. Um, but I think the safer play is probably to Shadow Pen Priest it. I'm curious though, I'm, I'm going to do it for the science. Does this... Okay, the last gasp still goes off. So that's unfortunate. Um, I was wondering because it said banish, um, banish the slain creature, but I didn't know if the banish would happen before the last gasp or, yeah, before the last gasp or after it. And it looks like our opponent is kind of just playing things now, so I'm not as concerned here. Um, don't want to load up everything in one lane. There's another shadow mirror back. Reason being, he's playing Willpower. Okay, he's just going to leave. Um, I didn't want to load everything up in one lane, though, because Willpower has access to Dawn's Wrath. Okay, we're up against the Breton Guest, the Forgotten Hero. They're on Sorcerer. This is apparently a bonus round. Um, we'll make the most of it. This opening hand is a little weird, but I'm going to keep it. A little bit bizarre. Black Soul Gem did not see it all in the last match, so I'm glad to have that over here. Dusk Fang did not see it all in the last match. Um, these three are, are normal, though. Our opponent is Nobody two ranks below us, and they're on... Looks like 50 cards, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to play the... Treeminder first, because Inderil and Dark Guardian have two attack, so either one of them can clean this guy up on the next turn. Camelot Hero. Okay, so this guy's going to be trying to go fast. Probably has a lot of reach in his deck. Probably need to look out for him. Um, if I can get Donfang attached to anyone, it would be this guy. But he would still die if he attacks me um, pretty quickly. Gates of Madness. Okay, <laughs> so everything that I said before, uh, never mind. It's now become totally unpredictable. Did he just silence himself? <laughs> okay, I see why this guy's a lower rank than me. He's just having fun, and I... Uh, I respect that. Yeah, nice. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> play my Indoral Mastermind. My tryhard deck over here. Uh, and then we'll see what he's up to. Can't believe he got a gate so quickly, though. Usually when I play a, a themed deck like this one, for example, um, it takes me a while to get like uh, my Altar of Despair or you know, Gates of Madness or whatever card is that I'm trying to get. Um, I've been lucky today, but normally I feel like it's not the case. Okay, I think Praetorian Commander is good here, because it's going to boost everything else in the deck. Although this, and then Rhetoran Forerunner... Actually, I, yeah, I do like this more. And then we'll, we'll get to the Praetorian soon. Um, but I like this a little bit more. Gets me some form of uh, of health gain. And Dawnfang works really well on this guy, and Duskfang works really well on this girl. Talani Oathman does spawn stuff. Okay, so this this is not going to be so cut and dry with who's going to win and who's going to lose. Get behind me. Interesting. Okay, so I think Donfang is maybe the right play. Donfang. Donfang what? Donfang Black Soul Gem looks pretty good to me. I think we'll kill this. But yeah. Okay, we boost our Faded Wraith, we gain a bit of health. We up our Praetorian, which is the card we don't really want to be boosting. Okay, he's not going to kill me. Not going to kill my my guy. But he now has a seething flesh golem over there. 
That could be problematic. Get a 5 5 Odinir and Necromancer, though. Um, honestly, I don't think. I'm going to keep the gate up there because I don't really care. Um, I don't think that's that big of a problem. And I kind of like. What do I like? Faded Wraith will draw me some cards. I think that's pretty good. Still haven't had a chance to get the Praetorian down, which kind of sucks. But this needs to be addressed. This hopefully can get killed soon by me. Okay. <laughs> We're taking it slow. It's a slower kind of game. Seven cost, or seven damage Odinir and Necromancer. It's pretty crazy to see. Um, hmm. Praetorian's a good fit over here. As is the Inspiring Kinsman. I think those are fine. We can deal with this. This thing's very oppressive to have in a lane. I'm glad that it only got guard on it and not anything else. Not that there was anything else it could get, because it got that from Mentor of the Watch, but still. Okay, Emmerich is upsetting. I wonder what he kills here, though. Emmerich is very upsetting to see. Yeah, buffs on to not the creatures we needed to. Well, this should be... Yeah, this should be okay to take care of. We'll go for a 5th Legion. Then Shadowmere. Bust that open. Is it at the end of your turn? Yeah, at the end of your turn. Okay, so this thing has 3-3. Three, three. It's going to get 4-4. Four, four. I need to just ensure that something buffs onto it, which is pretty RNG dependent. We didn't get anything to buff onto it. But we do have Odinir and Necromancer to bring our other one back. So we were able to deal with it. It sucks that we have to use our <laughs> our eight power guy to get our forerunner back, but that's the play we're gonna go with. And then we have just a uh, much better board than he does. So unless he rolls something like uh, the new era or a red year from his Gate of Madness, which I'm not even sure if he can. I don't know if Telvani, or not Telvani, um, Tamriel collection cards are included in random pools like that. Okay, <laughs> just a normal Nixox. I'd love to see it. Boost ourself again. Lay down a 5 8 Dark Guardian. And then I'll start swinging at him. Don't want to give him too many cards. How much do we have? 6, 14, 17, 21, 31. No, did I do that right? 6, 14, 17, 21, 27. I don't know why I said 31. Um, but the point is, we have, a, we have a lot of cards to use against him. Oh, waiting for opponent to reconnect. I was checking my phone. Um, okay, so if you're going to play Gates of Madness, <laughs> my... Uh, my advice to you is don't go in expecting to win and don't rage quit your matches. Um, could be that their computer miraculously turned off or something, but uh, usually people will just kind of leave. Um, like sometimes I, I get it. I do it too when I'm taking a shit at work and then my break is up and I've got to get back on shift. Sometimes I'll, I'll leave a match without conceding or I'll put my phone away and not think about it, but I try to just go up here and just click concede whenever I can because it saves your opponent a lot of time. Um, and it, it's just a polite thing to do. So, um, big Odinir and Necromancer. We'll hit with the Drain Creatures first. And he hits a Prophecy that we have to <laughs> wait for now. A Prophecy in a uh, Gate of Madness deck is crazy, though. Oh, 
Okay. And that's a win. GG. Uh, we're up against Lorathine, the treasure hunter. Or Lorathine, the treasure hunter. Um, they're on a mono-neutral deck, which could mean that we're in for something pretty bad. Uh, that being Factotum's Yagram's Workshop. But it could also mean that uh, we're up against something very interesting. Okay, it's not interesting at all. There's a word wall. <laughs> it's Yagram's uh, Dragons. So, um, Go here. Or, or he's boosting the neutral shout that's not called Dragon. The, uh, the other one. Okay, so... I'm going to stop talking about what kind of deck this is now, because I have no idea. Been more that, um, put my Tree Minder down since it blocks up now and will boost my Magicka. Not really sure what the right Galen target is here. On the one hand, Ash Berserker seems really good, but going for the greed play of having four Mirax in my deck could be pretty fun. Okay, so we've had a word wall, we've had a mud crab, and we've had a fact totem. This is all in a 50 card deck as well, so been more kind of interested in what we're going up against, for better or worse. Um, I My guess we'll Galen in some Ash Berserkers. It seems more responsible. If we draw one next turn... It'll be better than drawing a, a Galen to Mirak on the next play. Dragon Aspect. Okay, that's the one that I was hoping that he boosted, so maybe he's not playing Call Dragon. That's a big maybe. Very big maybe. Uh, I'll throw down the Ash Berserker. <laughs> I don't like that I'm doing that, but... I'd like to have a card on the board at least. Uh, that way I can use my altar next turn on it. Okay, things are already bad. Things are already bad. Indoral Mastermind could be kind of good. Uh, hmm. That edict is going to be very important later. I'm going to put the Dark Guardian down. These two can take on his Factotum. While leaving the... Ash Berserker here. I don't really know how to fight against Factotum, so I'm going to be honest. It's, yeah, when this thing gets down, it's game over. <laughs> really is. And that's what my Edict was for. It was to get rid of this, but there's not really a point in playing on after this thing goes down. He didn't do it right, though. He didn't do it right. What you're supposed to do with that card is the uh, deal 2 damage, gain 2 health. That's what most people do. Or the deal 2 damage, deal 2 damage. Um, I believe is what most people do. So that's kind of odd to me that he did it that way. Again, I'm not an expert on these neutral decks, but that's what always happens to me is people do that. So he's... Am I misunderstanding how this works? No, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, this is weird. There's one of the big Ash Berserkers, and actually, if we just get that guy out there... What does this do? Slay, you put a random shout. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, we'll draw two cards from this. 
so that's not too bad. Now this guy dies. It, it, it's really tough to go up against a deck full of um, full of cards with lethal and regenerate and guard and all this stuff. But I don't know if he's picked the most optimal you know, settings every time for his cards. Okay. Play my Shadowfen Priest on this one. Kill that and then I'll Falafi. Like to clean up this lane a little bit. Probably swings. Uh, probably swings, swings. Not sure though. Okay, he's just gonna kill that. And he's not on Singleton. I was thinking for a second this was Singleton, but it's not. Um, I guess Apex Wolf. I'll hit face, but... Either I got very lucky with this guy's opening hand or something, or... Okay, there's Workshop, though. So we do need to be worried about that. Double Ash Berserker is cool. I think we'll do this, though. That feels right to me. Um, yeah, we'll do Double Ash Berserker. So that, I'm... I'm feeling nervous about what he's got in his hand. Could be Parthenax, um, but then we steal it. Could be Odoving. Dwarven Colossus. <laughs> okay, so we steal that. It's going to summon a bunch of power spheres, but that's okay. We could either steal it or just destroy it, but I think... Fine, just straight up stealing it. Draw some more cards. We're going to overdraw, actually, but we've got... Oh, it was a support. I was going to say... Oh, no way. That's how that works? Oh! <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw because I was looking at my cards, but... Because these power spheres are out, and I stole it, and they summoned it, I think it, it's... Well, I know it's still getting keywords from it. That's crazy. But I was going to say, at least we can journey everything back. Um, but we lost uh, Necromancer's Amulet there, so that sucks. We are going to lose something else. It's just a matter of what. Still haven't gotten the altar down. Clockwork Dragon, okay. Crusader's Assault, we lost an action. And that. Uh, well, I think we're going to kill this. And then we're going to... Man, I don't know. Um, we're kind of kind of chilling. Um, I'm going to play down my Night Talon Lord. And I'm going to play down my False Incarnate, and I'm actually not going to kill his Power Spheres because they're buffing my guy. And we got Ward and Rally. Pretty good keywords for us. He's going to use his last Charge of Workshop on a Word Wall for Call Dragon. Is that what I'm picking up? I mean, anything he gets, we have Piercing Javelin and Edict. So I think we kind of have this one. Yeah, 
call Dragon. Does he have the deal 10 damage? Unsummon an enemy creature. Fair enough, but we still keep that in our hand. I just hope we don't lose another support. Please don't overdraw a support. Okay, that's fine. So, um, I'll attack this. Oh. He doesn't have a way to get that back from the discard pile. Just edict it. And I'll hit this. There's not really a reason to, but I'll hit it. In regen and breakthrough. I don't know if regen works on curse effects. Oh, he got soul tear. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of forgot that card was real. Um, so now if he gets... Uh, what's it called? Um, the Fire Breath Shout. He can kill the Dwarven Colossus that we took from him. Just would depend on which one of these he values higher. If he's only got one. Drain Vitality is annoying. Oh my god, wow. This is obnoxious. Okay, um, we lost our other support. Oh my god. Um, well, this is going to be kind of nuts, right? It's at the beginning, it's at the start of my turn. Okay, play this. I'll play this. I really don't like any of this, though. This is really bad. I know a shortcut. It's just how good... Uh, Parthenax is. Like, he's he's literally busted. Because he can just generate loops for himself with Soul Tear. Which is probably what he's gonna... He's got... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Oh, that's the one from his deck. I was like, how did he have two? But... Th this is getting really tired, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly really upset with... With all that. That's pissing me off really, really heavily. I just want to be able to play cards. Uh-huh. And I know the second I do a Dwarven Colossus, it's going to get um, booted into my hand again. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, man, what the fuck? This sucks. Play this and this. It's really, really bad. I mean, two javelins down, two edicts down. I don't have that much more removal, guys. I should have killed these power spheres a long time ago. Yep, and he's got another unsummon. So, how many shouts is that? A bunch. It's four drained vitalities. That's five, six, ten. A few of these are still shouts. Oh, god damn. I don't know how I'm going to win this. I'll 
clear a um. path. I'll clear a path. Gotta play Dwarven Colossus over there, I guess. <sighs> this is, uh... This is annoying. Oh my god. Please don't be Parthenax. Anything else. Thank god. <laughs> I don't think I could deal with that anymore in my life. He's got to have more shouts. Please tell me it's like Solter or Call of Valor. And also, please give me a ward. Oh, it didn't work anymore because it's it's a different one. Shit. Oh man. Well, what the fuck, man? There's no way that I lost this. Oh, God. Okay. Um, Rhetoran Forerunner doesn't do anything. It kind of does something, actually. Get. Yeah, it does. It does do something. Okay, so we pull out our Forerunner. And we give it Dawn, Dawn Fang, maybe. Um. Oh God, this sucks. <laughs> this really fucking sucks. That was the worst series of events that could have happened to me. Yeah, just gotta kill that. That sucks, man. That's really, really unfortunate. That we just lost to a Parthenax loop. I mean, whatever. I need to get a javelin here. He's got uninterrupted lethal now. Come on, dude. Just swing. Just fucking swing. Just finish me. That is so, so, <laughs> so upsetting. That's got to be Solter in his hand. Oh. Wow. I can't believe that. Okay, we're up against Blazing Wajin, the Abominator. Um, I think this deck has taken more out of my soul than any other deck I've played. I, I've had so many losses in this deck that are just so out of nowhere or so close. It feels like it's driving me insane. <sighs> um, that last one really hurt me. <laughs> that last one was so bad. Oh my god. I, I could have won. I was messing around with the um, I don't even know the names of cards, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's messing around with that big, stupid dwarf thing. And we're up against another person playing with dragons in an empire deck. They are on 90 cards. Yep. I mean, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind <laughs> playing against these people. But the problem is, it doesn't get any better as you go up the ranks. It really doesn't. It gets worse. Uh, people down here are trying anything to survive, or they're just on complete meme decks. Um, people up top are trying their asses off to win. So you just have to play a balancing act between where you want to be at in, in the ranks, I guess. Um, we kind of have a clear play with either Inspiring Kinsman or False Incarnate next turn. 
I think because he did nothing. It's inspiring Kinsman plus the tree minder we just got. That person though, they did play well. Um, to to their credit, but it was with a Parthenax loop, so that does it just really hurts to play against that, in my opinion. I'm gonna play all this out and I'm gonna wait a minute and then establish my double ash berserker and see if uh if that'll do anything for us. You can He's on Necromancer's Amulet as well. I think now's a good time to get our Black Soul Gem activated, actually. And we'll go here. Proc onto the Ash Berserker. Um, hmm. Here. Yeah, I think uh, Dawnbreaker's fine. Let's get rid of that. Finish me off. Okay. He's expending resources, so I'm fine with that. Chimera, spirit of the sky, guide us. Okay, he's also got a lot of uh, a lot of crap. I'm gonna swing first. Play Mana Marco on the Shadow Pen Priest. And I wanna get rid of his fervor. Don't mind so much about the other two. We've got 15 on board. We've got three on board, uh, is what I meant to say. I'm ready to <laughs> <coughs> um, this is going to be annoying to have out, but not the end of the world. We'll play this way. So hopefully his Dawn's Wrath won't do anything as major. And we'll be able to take out his supports, I think, uh, using Shadow Vens and Edicts for their support removal seems like it's going to be more important in this game. Give no this one can be counted upon. It's a Korra. He opts to destroy that one. That's odd. It's pretty odd. Why is this still trapped? Isn't it for one turn? Deepwood Tracker? Trapper? I feel like it's been longer than one turn. Maybe not, though. I don't know. Uh, I'll kill that. I'm not going to take it too fast. Um, I will play a False Incarnate, though. Would you have from the narrow bed? And uh, Indoral Mastermind. Again, that way if he's going to um, Dawn's Wrath anything, it's going to be this lane. I'd rather keep the 8 damage creature. He's going to finish me off. That's insulting. <laughs> and Chotala's Treachery. Okay. So we know he's running steel cards, just like I am, with Mirac, really, and Mana Marco. Uh, we'll get rid of this, and we'll see what he's on about. I've got 12 creatures in the discard pile, and all of which I'd be happy to uh, journey back in. And especially since I haven't used journey yet, I feel like it'd be a great opportunity. Okay, he edicts my support, so I think I'll edict his support. You cannot hide. Play Praetorian and then edict that. Move on. These moves are pretty easy to play, uh, comparatively to a lot of the other stuff that we've been going up against tonight. And uh, he did have a Sovngarde hero that he called with Call of Valor, but he hasn't gotten any of his other dragons out yet, due to the size of his deck, probably. Um, we want to keep the Odinir and, and use it on another Praetorian if we can. So how about Barrow Stalker? 
And then after these two die, if he doesn't do anything crazy, I think Journey is probably the best play. Okay. Yeah, so now he's, he's pivoted to like Argonians, <laughs> which is odd. Um, play this Shadowfen Priest. Silence that, kill that. Odinirin on Praetorian. And then we'll see what he does. Uh, he's This is probably the type of person that runs a new era, so we'll have to look out for that. There's the Call Dragon I was concerned about. Doba of the Voice. Okay, he's taking things extraordinarily slow. Gonna kill his Dova and do that. I'm not gonna play anything. I feel like he's holding on to a new era, which I really don't like. Uh, I'm not gonna just play into that willy nilly. 17 creatures in the discard pile. He's got another Call Dragon. Is this the one that shackles? Okay. Imperial Might. It's an odd card. Your order. Hmm. Well, I think I will use this opportunity to play Journey and Alter. And then we'll see what he does. He's got an Ebonheart Oracle. I would not mind stealing that. How can I serve? He's still refusing to hit me, so I, I'm pretty certain this top card here is, um, is in fact the one I'm concerned about. And we should have a pretty high damage uh, Shadow Mirror coming out. Four four is fine. So I'll just kill it, because again, pretty certain that he's running a new era. Parthenax, cool. <sighs> I am exhausted fighting the same decks. Oh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Cool. We haven't gotten any of the... <laughs> He's just gonna wait me out. Um, well... I would hope that uh, he doesn't have soul tear, but we can't be too sure. Um, we also can maybe kill him. We can get close to killing him anyway. Uh, I'll do that, and that, and I'll cycle this. Cool. Um, I'll even lay down a false incarnate. This way he can't get any health gain of his own. And with two health, we just need one of our charge creatures, either a recycled Shadow Mirror or Rhetoran Forerunner. There's Soul Tear, yep. Had a feeling that was coming. And if he gets anything other than Call Valor or Drain Vitality, we're kind of done. Uh, it's going to be very hard to come back. Like, if he gets the Red Shout, he can, yep, just do that. Uh, if he gets the Neutral Shout, he can... He's going to have to start hitting me eventually. 
Uh, if he gets the neutral shout, he can essentially... Let's do this. Alter it. Get Apex Wolf. Ebonheart. False Incarnate. Oh, I shouldn't have put them all in one lane. That was stupid. Ross Dar. Let's see what he gets. He gets my Faded Wraith. And he has more than enough damage to kill me now. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? What do you do against that? Okay, guys. Well, after back-to-back -back, uh, Parthenax loops and um, just a lot of a lot of stuff that <laughs> I don't like playing against, I'm going to call the deck there. Uh, I think I mentioned in the last um, the last match. I don't think I've had this much pain in a Legends recording in quite a while. Um, there's like this feeling in my heart, like it's going to explode. <laughs> I just don't feel uh, happy at all right now like i'd i'd rather cast a testicular torsion on myself than continue playing against the people i was playing with so um i think that i'm just going to end the video here uh if you enjoyed please let me know um I, there's definitely a way to do this deck better than the way that i did it uh and i'd be curious to see a lot of other people's interpretations of the deck but i thought this would be fun I thought incorrectly, apparently. I mean, I had fun in some of the matches, but others were just completely abysmal. Um, which I don't really think is a, a problem with the deck. It's just a problem with, you know, some some cards being played down and insta-winning. So, I don't know. Um, I'll edit this and uh, try not to hang myself as I do it. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video, though. And um, I appreciate your support, as always. So, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.